Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. If you guys are new here, don't forget to hit that little subscription button down below. I'd really appreciate the support. And if you guys find some sort of value in today's video, which I hope you guys do, uh, definitely hit that little like button below as well. Uh, just shows me you enjoy these kind of videos. And if you guys have any certain things you wanna learn or just kinda see in my videos, definitely leave a comment down below. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Just kinda shows me what you guys wanna see on this channel. But with that said, we're gonna get right into it. If you guys don't know about it's been a, a little bit of over a year. This video is a little bit overdue, but uh, today I'm actually going to be talking about my first year as an entrepreneur, basically going to be going over four points that I learned that I think you guys, um, if you are new to entrepreneurship or, or even if you're not, this might have apply to you in some sort of way. So I hope um, you guys can find something that you can kind of implement in your own business life um, and personal life. So with that said, let's get right into it. So the first thing that I actually had realized when becoming an entrepreneur, and I guess I can call myself an entrepreneur, I, I, I did graduate college, I started my business my senior year uh, from the University of Arizona. I graduated, but I didn't take a full-time job. If you guys don't know, I pretty much turned my uh, my kind of hobby of buying and selling phones into my full-time profit uh, and now I make a pretty decent income out of it and so um, with that one thing I realized is no money really comes easy and yeah uh, what I do for a living isn't the most technical thing or anything like that but in the beginning it took me a long time to realize um, like how to really get good at it and that can apply in any sort of industry not even um, buying and selling like cellular devices but whether you're in the e-com, SMMA, uh, and like I'm trying all these things, like I've done them in the past or I'm currently doing them right now. Pretty much anything you can kind of think of that's on the trend side level of being an entrepreneur, I've at least attempted it uh, or am trying to do it right now. So I, I can definitely um, have some sort of credibility for it. Like I'm not here lying to you guys, but uh, it takes time to really get good at it. And yeah, there's people that'll blow up. I mean, in any industries, I don't whether they're legit or not, I don't really know and I can't speak for anybody but it takes a long time to really get uh, a, a true paycheck. And uh, I mean, you might make a sale here, you might get a $200 client here, like it, you can make money and you can get them pretty fast, but to really scale something into like a full-time like kind of income, it takes a lot of time. And for me, uh, it didn't take too much time. Like I got, I got really good at it, I got pretty lucky. Um, I had some decent like negotiation tactics and that's what I've done to become decently successful at what I do. But no money really comes easy. It's gonna take you time, it's gonna take you effort. No matter what people say, like courses are a good thing. Like I have a few my, of my own. I've taken a bunch of my own as well. Uh, and they will accelerate the process. I mean, a lot of people think they're so schemy. People are charging so much money for it. But if you can pay, I mean, some are $100 and some are $1,000. It obviously depends and not all value is always there in every course. But if you find the right one, um, it can really accelerate the process and you might have spent like a thousand or two thousand dollars on a single course You might think that's a real that's a lot But a lot of people think that that's just like you're purchasing something. No, you're investing your money You're investing in the knowledge and that's the most powerful thing especially as an entrepreneur because um, like for me I had, uh, attended a build your empire event just a couple months ago um, And I mean it was a couple hundred dollars But the amount of small nuggets that I have now implemented into my business and has really accelerated my income is way like the, the ROAS on that is truly incredible. So um, that's pretty much it for the first point. The second one, I'm just reading off my computer here, guys. Uh, the second one is the first year is all about building the foundation. And you guys should realize, you should not realize, on, like rely on blowing up. Some people like will, like for YouTube will blow up 100,000 or a million followers in like three months. A lot of the times you don't realize is those people have been posting videos for a long time. It just took that one video to kind of blow up for them. So like for me, I have the mindset and I always tell people to have this. Whenever you're putting out any sort of content or anything, um, like even if just investing in something for your business, take it as like, that could potentially be the one step or the next video or the next post that could literally blow you up uh, and truly accelerate that income for you just by monetizing it in some way. So um, whatever you guys are doing in terms of like personal branding, generating income through business, kind of have that mindset that you're not gonna blow up right away, but you just need to build the foundation. I mean, there's obviously the few percentage of people that just got really lucky, they got a viral video in their first like five videos and blew up, but that's not realistic. You can't have that mentality. For me, I've been doing YouTube for a, just over a little, over a year now I thought I'd be a lot more but I'm at 2,000 and, and it's a lot more than I ever thought it would be uh, just in terms of the amount of like work I put in these videos and how just seeing how far it's coming I mean it, I, it's just about all about building that foundation for yourself and 
uh, whatever it might be in, in terms of like the field of building your personal brand, generating income, uh, building connections, you need to build that foundation, especially within that first year. And it might take you five, six years, but that just all depends on how much work you decide to put in that first year. And if you're willing to take it to a full-time kind of level or even do it part-time, and there's a lot of successful people that do a, a plethora of things and make a decent amount of money at it, and it's just part-time. So. The third point I want to talk about is if you are guys get to the first point in your get to the point in your first year where you can where you just kind of reach this like standstill in your business and you'll have this in any business model. There comes a point where you need to scale something, but you can't do that by yourself. So the one thing that I've recognized is you really need to outsource work, but don't do it too early. One thing I've done in the past, I made the mistake. I tried to outsource work for my phone flipping business. I had people putting out ads. I had people looking for phones for me. When in reality, I had enough time in the day to really do it myself and that had cut out of my profits and I definitely think overall I could have made a lot more money um, during that time but I mean it's a, it's a live and learn lesson you got to have mistakes in a business to be able to grow yourself so don't have too many things on your plate but you really do need to outsource work to scale your business some businesses might be a little bit easier to outsource like mine's a little bit harder it's because it's handling a lot of money and these cell phones and there's just a lot to check but if you hire VAs obviously you need to hire a great VA but I mean it's just all online and I mean, thousands of people would do do it. So, I mean, there's some industries that it might be easier for, some it might be a little bit uh, more difficult, but really, if you want to scale, you need to outsource your work and never be afraid to pay somebody else uh, to do that work, but you just have to recognize and see if that is truly like value added to your business or if you could be doing it yourself, you're probably just gonna be losing money by having somebody else do it. Uh, so, the first fourth point that I want to talk about is work on turning your passions into profit. For me, if you guys don't know, again, I, I talked about it all the time, but my main income is buying and selling phones. That's not really something I want to do like full time for the rest of my life. I mean, there's comes to a point where you really get burnt out in a business. And for me, like I'm not burnt out or anything, but it's just, I have bigger goals. It's not something I can truly see scalable. So I'm working on other businesses definitely that are more into my pro like passion side that I want to turn into those profits. So definitely if you guys find a main income source, work on that income source, put a lot of time into that, but that extra five, 10% you need to be spending on turning those other passions into profits because you have to think long term especially in the first year of entrepreneurship you need to be trying as many things as possible until you find that one thing that you have a passion for and just kind of run with it but I mean you, again you need to have an income to be able to support those things so for a lot of my business like money that goes or income that comes from phone flipping I just reinvest in other businesses and I'm losing a lot of money investing in other things but I'm trying to realize that the long-term value of those things so I mean you make a sacrifice now and potentially get results in the future so you just have to turn those passions into profit at some point even though it's even if it's not your main thing if it is your main thing you're killing it scale that and just make a lot of money with it put content on, on every single platform you can do but until you find that have a main income source and just source that revenue source that income into the actual passion like for me I don't know if you guys know but like I, I really enjoy playing Xbox so for me one thing I started doing is I started building uh, a twitch following and I don't I think I have like 40 followers on it or, or something like that but I mean, I love playing Xbox. I love showing other people like my kind of humor when I play Xbox. And a lot of people think I'm dumb for starting a Twitch. Uh, and it's kind of a trendy thing to do. But I mean, I bought equipment. I, I bought this, like I set up this whole background. I have LED lights. I put a lot of uh, work into it. And so every night I stream for a couple hours and I'm using like Instagram to funnel people into following this Twitch. So I'm just trying new things. And I won't know, like if I can make Twitch a huge income for me, I will run with it. Like I have no problem with that. I think that is a huge passion of mine. And so you never really know where things are gonna lead. It's, I'm literally trying like five or six things right now. On my plane it does get hectic, but I mean as long as you love the grind and love what you do, I mean you're definitely gonna love your first year as an entrepreneurship. So with that said, that's pretty much it I have for you guys. I appreciate you if you made it through this far in the video. Again, if you found something value in the video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. If you guys aren't subbed yet, you guys know what to do. Hit that little subscription button down below. I'd really appreciate it. And with that said, I'll catch you guys tomorrow in the next video.